Hello, Michael here with another RenderMan tutorial. Um, but as you can see, I'm in ZBrush because we're going to be talking about exporting ZBrush displacement maps to RenderMan. Um, so I'm just going to quickly show you the export workflow for ZBrush. Um, if you're not using ZBrush, the displacement map uh, connecting the displacement map will be showed, and it's basically the same uh, for depending on uh, whatever 3D package you're using. Um, so as you can see here, I've created this tech ball thing. It's based on a tutorial that I found on YouTube. I'll put a link in the description because it's quite a cool little tutorial. Um, and it's quite high poly. It's uh, 2.6 uh, six, six million polygons, which is way too high for my to handle. Um, but the base mesh for it is only 41,000, which is not too bad. Um, and as you can see, um, it's quite rough looking at that low value. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to send this to, um, Maya, uh, and we're going to use, uh, the, multi-map exporter so to open that if you don't have already have it open by default um, you go to z plugin dock that and then you want to go to multi-map exporter um, before we start doing anything here though we need to uh, change a couple of variables in our preferences so if you go up to your preferences and um, you go down to import export and go to vector displacement displacement map these are the settings you want to have it set to by default um, I believe it's just set to um, flip and switch one and tangent flip and switch one. You want tangent flip and switch to be set to 43. Um, and then tangent evaluation mode is one, uh, zero for U, zero for V and auto crest border. And that's all you need to change there. So when you open up the vector, uh, sorry, when you open up the multi-map exporter, uh, you want to select vector displacement map. And you also want to uh, select export mesh and then we're going to go down to um, down to the bottom here um, it will have the options for vector displacement map so if you just open that um, you want to select your lowest subdivision because this is going to be your base mesh uh, you want to enable basically all those buttons um, this is just going to create a 32-bit EXR which is a which is a high range um, image type uh, which will allow you to get a good displacement map um, and once you've done that um, you can select any other maps that you want to uh, create if you wanted to do normals on top of this or uh, texture from polypen or whatever um, I've also already UV mapped this I just did an auto UV um, in ZBrush so it's not a very exciting UV map but it will do for the sake of this tutorial um, and then we want to select our map size um, 4k is probably going to give me enough resolution for what I can see here um, you can see if you zoom in these little um, portholes uh, the little vents um, aren't a great resolution um, I probably could have subdivided and reprojected again uh, to get it to look a little bit nicer but uh, for the sake of this tutorial, this is going to work fine. And it also depends on how close you're expecting to see your model. From this distance, everything looks fine. So I thought I'd just go with that. So we've got it set to 4K. We want to flip V because um, uh, ZBrush exports maps inverse to, uh, inverted to what most 3D packages read them as. Um, and your map border can just be set to 4, which is the default. Then we want to uh, click Create All Maps. And then we want to just select where we're going to export it to. Um, I've already created a uh, folder within my uh, Maya folder. So I'm just going to click save. I will click save off video, however, because this takes uh, about a minute or so to um, export. So I'm just going to stop the video and then restart it once it's done. All right. Um, and that took about 45 seconds. So my guess was about correct. Um, so with that done, let's jump over into Maya and get everything plugged in. Okay, so we've got a fresh scene here. I'm just going to save the scene real quick. Um, and then let's grab our um, OBJ. So uh, that is just wherever you exported uh, the texture to. It, it created the OBJ in the same place. Um, hot tip for Maya, you can drag your OBJ straight out of Explorer directly into Maya, which makes it a little bit quicker. Um, so select your mesh if it's super small like mine is. I'm just going to change the size of that.
Um, so with your mesh, mesh selected, I want to go to Attribute Editor now. Uh, at the top, go to Attributes and then Render Man and then Subdiv Scheme. Um, displacement maps require a subdivision scheme. We're not going to actually be viewing the subdivision in um, the viewport because that would just be too much for Maya to handle. Um, so um, it just is going to be subdividing it at the render stage. So at the bottom now of your attributes, um, you've got this thing called Render Man uh, under Extra Attributes. The subdivision scheme should be set to Catmull Clark and then the subdiv face varying interpolation should be set to 3, new style, internal only. All right, uh, let's um, close the attribute editor and I'm just going to make it so we can see um, it uh, the actually before we do that, let's add some lights in. Um, once again, I'm just going to use the three point light setup because it's my fave. Uh, and let's do a render and see what that looks like. Okay, so with that IPR complete, um, as you can see, we've got our ball. Um, it is sub it's subdivided. Um, however, we've lost all of our detail because we haven't actually got our displacement map in it so far. Um, you can see that the displacement map is not on um, where the uh, vents were up in the corners of this uh, area here. There's no detail. So we're going to make our displacement maps now. Um, before I do that, I'm just going to change the material of this guy because he's a little bit boring. So why don't we grab uh, metal, uh, let's use copper. Um, so I'm going to stop that IPR. And with my mesh selected, I'm going to right click on that and import and assign to selected. It's just going to give me a material in um, the Hypershade editor to work with. So let's bring up the Hypershade editor by clicking this button at the top here. It's going to maximize this for now and I'm going to clean up the scene. Let's map out our copper material by right clicking on it and clicking graph network. All right, so the first thing we want to add in is a Pixar texture node. Um, in the Hypershade editor, if you just go up to the top here, the easiest way to find that is just to type in PXR text and you'll get it there. If you click it, it'll drop it into the scene. Let's put it here for now. Um, in file name, we want to go to open and then when we're going to wherever you had your uh, displacement map uh, exported to from ZBrush or whatever program you were using, select your displacement map and open it up. Next, we're going to create the displacement transform. So PXR dis um, and you get displacement transform there in a list. Uh, for ZBrush, you want to set this to ZBrush Vector. Uh, make sure the vector space is, space is set to Tangent. Um, and then all the other default settings should be correct. Next, we're going to create the Pixar Displace node, uh, which is different to your Pixar trans uh, Displace Transform node. Uh, you can use that this there, or if you are just on uh, the standard thing here, you want to go to Displacements under Render Man. Click that and bring that node in. Um, and as you can see, similar to the way that the material is already plugged into this guy here, we've got an extra one here. So um, let's delete this one because we no longer need it. Before we do though, we'll just grab this handle here and plug it into the surface shader. Then we can delete that copper SG. Um, and then we want to connect up all of our nodes. So if I just select the uh, texture node and tap three on the keyboard, we'll get all of our outputs. We want to uh, grab the result RGB and drag it to uh, displacement vector. Next, we want to get the result XYZ and drag it to displacement vector on the Pixar displace. And finally, the out color should be plugged into your displacement shader by default. So now um, that should pretty much do it for your uh, displacement node setup. So let's go and render that guy again. Whoops, but uh, because I deleted that um, node, I'm going to have to reapply that texture. So just select your mesh, right click on your uh, material and assign material to selection. All right, and start the IPR. All right, so um, let's move around to our vent that we had on the right hand side there and it should be now visible. Yep, you can already see it. So um, before that wasn't visible, it wasn't displacing, displacing it uh, and now it is, so that is great. Um, and also we can see the, um, the cog sort of shape that's in the center of the um, object. 
uh, there. So that's pretty much all there is to it. A uh, lot simpler to use displacement maps now, um, now that they've given us uh, in the docs some um, uh, a little bit easier and clearer information to uh, go off. So that is very nice of Pixar. Thank you kindly for these docs. I actually found them very easy to follow. Uh, if you don't know where they are, uh, make sure you go to them there. Uh, if you just search um, uh, RenderMan21 documentation, you'll find it in Google, or I can just stick a link in the description here. Um, but if you liked this tutorial and you would like to help other people find it, make sure you click the like button. And if you'd like to see more, make sure you're subscribed because I'm, on, because I'm putting up a new tutorial every week on average, except for this week because RenderMan just came out, so I'm putting up a whole bunch. Um, but yes, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.